Hi YouTube! I have come to a realization the first step to recovery is um, coming to terms with your problem. So I'm going to admit something that's very embarrassing. I, I have dandruff. I have had dandruff for weeks if not months and I have been in denial and have been doubting myself for several reasons and I'll be telling you about how my regimen has changed, how my, my thoughts have changed for my dreadlocks themselves and why. So let's do why first. Why? Well, when I had dandruff, when I had normal hair, I would see it and I would flake it out or I would use some dandruff shampoo and it would go away eventually. I didn't see it as a medical problem. I just saw it as kind of a nuisance that everybody at some point in their life has dandruff and it's not that big a deal. That's not the case, at least not for me. I have had dandruff for so long and so often and to such an extreme that it really is a medical problem and I never ever saw it that way until now. Because of that denial, when I dreaded my hair, it got worse because I completely changed my regimen. I was no longer using products. I was using everything natural. I was using, or natural, I was using baking soda, apple cider vinegar, and essential oils. That's it. And so it got worse. They got a lot worse. And again, I was in the state of mind that it, it it's not that big a deal. It's just dandruff. I'll just flake it out. I'll listen to all of the, it, the hundreds of message boards that I've read and go with that because these people know what they're talking about. These people have had dreadlocks for this long. They must know what they're talking about. And in some cases, I'm sure they do. However, for me, that's not the case. The methods that I was using of baking soda and apple cider vinegar were just not working. It, it would go away, my dandruff would go away for like a day or so, and then it would come right back. So it is a medical problem. It is a medical issue. So that's a completely different outlook of this is just flaky skin and then I just need to deal with it that way. I was treating the skin on my head, my scalp, differently than any other skin on my body because it had hair on it. If you have a skin condition like eczema or, heck, if you have poison ivy on your skin, you're going to treat it with medicine because that's how you get rid of it. If you have poison ivy, you're not just going to wash it away. You're not just going to, like, fleck it away and assume that it will go away. It doesn't work like that. You have to treat it. And dandruff, for me, my condition of dandruff, or SD, I haven't been diagnosed with SD, so I, I'm reluctant to say SD, but um, I'm just going to say dandruff. My dandruff is to the point where it needs to be treated. It can't just be ignored. You're going to treat poison ivy with hydrocortisone or calamine lotion or something that will make it go away. And so for my dandruff, I need to treat it in order to make it go away. I can't just ignore it. And that's really evident over the past couple of months. Now, my point of view changed drastically when I really started watching some videos of a YouTube user that I fangirl for just a little bit. And her username is Quotidian Light, and she's awesome. In my opinion, she's one of the most experienced. I can't say that she's an expert because she always talks about how she's not an expert and she's not um, certified or anything like that. However, she's probably one of the most experienced and well-spoken um, people with dreadlocks on YouTube. And she has her own website and she has, I want to say hundreds of videos. So I started watching some of her videos and she kept mentioning this condition that she had. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. It's seboric dermatitis. Seboric dermatitis. But she always shortened it down to SD. And she would talk about SD this or SD that. And I'd be like, what is she talking about? So I kept going back 
more and more through her videos. Oh, okay. And so then I Googled it. And part of, there are some pretty intense pictures of this stuff. But some of, one of the symptoms was like scales of skin that you could peel off. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've done that before. I just thought that was dandruff. Like I didn't think that was that big of a deal. I guess why I was so flippant about my dandruff was because I saw so many commercials and over-the-counter stuff for dandruff that it was like, treat your dandruff. I thought it was like everybody had it. At some point in life, everybody had it. Oh, okay, no big deal. But this is something different. And I've never been diagnosed for it. However, from what I've read, from what I've experienced, it's either really, really bad dandruff or it's SD. And the second thing that made me change my opinion, my point of view about my my dandruff, was, and that it's not just something that it'll eventually go away, was I was washing my hair one day, and it was before I did a dreadlock update. I think it was my last dreadlock update. And I was separating my dreadlocks. And about once a month, I will, I won't just separate them, but I'll go down to the root and I'll make sure that the hairs that I want to be going into a dreadlock go into that dreadlock. It's probably not necessary, especially since I'm doing neglect dreadlocks. However, I just like to know what's going on in my scalp. I was doing that. And I had a dread around here somewhere. And I was like, ooh, I might want to separate that. It's a little bit thick. Which I didn't end up separating it. I just go through ups and downs of maybe they're too thick, maybe they're too thin. But anyway, I was looking at this dreadlock. And I looked at it really close in the mirror. And I just kind of started like rolling it and trying to get my finger in the center of it. Because it just didn't look right. And I got to the center of it. And something happened that was also really gross. And I'm really putting myself out there and saying this. I had dandruff trapped in the center of this dreadlock. And so I went through almost every single dreadlock. And there were several. There were at least four or five. Like here, here, one back here. It was in patches, which is another symptom. It's in patches. Um, and my dandruff, because I had been ignoring it, because I hadn't been treating it from my scalp, before it got into my dreadlocks, it just started growing with my dreadlocks. So I got really freaked out. And I had serious doubts about having dreadlocks in the first place and really considered combing them out. So I went to Quotidian Light and I sent her a message. After hearing what she had to say, I I was set. I was, she basically told me the products that you used before, if they worked on, on your dandruff before, they'll work now. Your scalp is still the same scalp. You just have dreadlocks. I was so scared of everything that I had heard on the message boards that I had was was reading that if I used you know, something like this on my hair, then I would get buildup. And after buildup, I would get mold. And after mold, people would walk around me and I'd be smelling bad. And I, I just got scared into doing something, into not treating my scalp the way I had before. So I went with my gut. I went with what Quotidian said. And I started treating my hair with the dandruff shampoos that I had in the past. And it's better. It's not great, but it's better. However, it's been almost 11 months now since I've used any sort of dandruff shampoo. So I'm not surprised that it's not com I'm not completely out of the woods yet. When I say anti-product propaganda, I it is negative. I mean, propaganda would normally be a negative thing. That's how I associate it. And in some ways it is. I have to thank the natural community, the natural dreadlock community, for getting me where I am now. I would never have realized that I could have dreadlocks the way they are now without them. 
I couldn't, I would never realize that it was even possible um, that my hair would lock without doing anything to it, simply by, well, neglecting it. I would not have had the support that I needed in the formative weeks when you're having a lot of doubts about doing what you're doing without them either. And whenever I had a question, whenever anything was wonky or I had doubts or I just needed to look at pictures of people who were already dreaded, whatever, that was where I went to. And I am always grateful for that. And for a lot of people, they need that in order to get to this point. And I am happy that I am here at this point. However, in terms of dandruff, I do wish there was some change in the community because it seemed like that over the hundreds of boards that I read and the movies that I watched, who were purest natural dreadheads, that if you have dandruff, if you have these problems, then it can be fixed with baking soda, apple cider vinegar, and essential oils, those three things, or in some sort of combination of. However, those things don't work for me, and I'm starting to realize that. But it took a lot for me to get to that point because of that fear of buildup. And I just wish that there were change in the community where people would say, okay, try these things, baking soda, apple cider vinegar, essential oils, all of these natural things, because you are trying to stay natural. Try them first, and if they don't work for you, then here's another option for you to go to. Because it's, uh, people are going to say, life's not fair, whatever. It's not fair to the people who have dandruff like I do, who do want to stay natural, and need accommodations in order to be natural because of your dandruff, because of your condition. It's it's just not fair for someone who has a condition like, like this and simply have to give up because these things just aren't working. And that's not the case. The, the option to use dandruff shampoo, the option to use a medicated shampoo in order to treat a problem is completely disregarded because of buildup issues, because of detangling issues, because of those types of things. And that's not the case for me. So the idea that dandruff shampoo is detangling and can build up in your dreadlocks is true to an extent if you don't water it down. It is detangling to a point, but not detangling to the point that you won't be able to get dreadlocks. So it's brought to an extreme, I guess. And so when you have a condition and it needs to be treated, and it needs to be treated with medicine, then it can be treated with medicine and you can still have natural dreadlocks. That's what I'm trying to say.